Into the Arabian Gulf, stretching five and a half kilometers, lies the world's most audacious engineering project, Palm Jumeirah. This vast creation, visible from space, defies nature's threats of earthquakes, violent storms, and erosion. Remarkably, it exists, a megastructure built solely from sand and rock. In August 2001, Dubai, a bustling hub in the Arabian Gulf, embarked on constructing one of the largest man-made islands globally. Engineers faced an unprecedented challenge, opting for a construction method unlike any other. Instead of conventional concrete and steel, the island emerged from the sea using only natural materials, sand and rock. This audacious plan aimed to address Dubai's impending economic challenge. Dependent on oil reserves, the emirate faced a looming crisis as oil was set to run out by 2016. The visionary crown prince, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, devised a $2 billion plan to transform Dubai into the world's premier luxury tourist destination. Dubai's ambitious goal involved tripling tourist numbers to 215 million, necessitating an expansion of its coastline. The Crown Prince's solution was an extraordinary one, a massive island shaped like a palm tree, adding 56 kilometers of beachfront. This megastructure would be covered with luxury villas, shopping malls and restaurants connected to a crescent-shaped breakwater holding 22 hotels. Unlike typical constructions using concrete and steel, the challenge here was to use only natural materials. The palm-shaped island would consist of 94 million cubic meters of sand and a protective breakwater of 5.5 million cubic meters of rock, a feat equivalent to building a two. Five-meter high wall encircling the entire world. To bring this audacious plan to life, Dubai sought the world's best engineers, leading them to experts in land reclamation from northern Europe and Holland. The Dutch, known for increasing their country's land mass by 35%, were the chosen team. The project demanded careful consideration of factors such as Dubai's storms, wave heights, tidal surges, and the impact of global warming. The Gulf's unique characteristics, being relatively shallow and short, made it an ideal location for such a megastructure. However, the engineers still had to contend with Shamal storms and the worst-case scenario, a storm occurring once in a hundred years. Calculations led to the decision that the breakwater must be three meters above the waves and 11.5 kilometers long. The challenge intensified as the developers aimed to start construction immediately, bypassing the completion of thorough research. This gamble forced the engineers into a race against time, aiming to complete a project of this scale in just five years, a task that typically takes 15 years. Selecting the precise location for this monumental creation fell on project manager Bob Berger. Marking the center of the project on the seafloor, they embarked on the massive task of constructing the breakwater, a crucial element for the island's stability. Disaster struck in September 2001 when the 9-11th attacks halted global travel, impacting the Middle East's tourism. Despite the setback, construction continued on the palm-shaped island and its accompanying breakwater. The 1,200 foreign engineers faced challenges, including safety concerns and a drop in tourism. Undeterred by geopolitical challenges, the developers committed to the build, investing millions in hiring top reclamation engineers. By November 2001, the breakwater construction began in earnest. Teams utilized dredges, barges, cranes and quarry operations to build the massive 11.5-kilometer sea wall. The seafloor was built up with layers of sand and rubble, crucial for absorbing wave force. Enormous rocks, weighing up to six tons each, became the outer armor of the breakwater, protecting it from the sea's destructive forces. Sourcing enough rock required an extensive operation involving 16 quarries across the UAE. Barges and ships transported the rocks from quarries to the construction site, creating a 24-7 operation delivering up to 40,000 tons of rock daily. The intricate placement of rocks, graded by size and weight, ensured stability against the sea's constant assault. 
Divers played a vital role in the project, conducting detailed underwater studies to check for signs of fatigue or displacement in the rocks. Every movement was meticulously monitored to prevent any potential threats to the project's integrity. Despite global challenges and a fast-track timeline, the construction of Palm Jumeirah continued, showcasing the audacity of human engineering and determination against all odds. Building in the sea poses numerous challenges, yet this breakwater section remains resilient. By January 2002, six months into the project, a substantial part of the breakwater extends proudly 4.5 kilometers into the sea. It marks an exhilarating moment for the team as the dream transforms into reality. Standing on the precipice of the ocean, gazing back at Dubai, the engineers reflect on the monumental achievement. However, over 10 kilometers of this extensive seawall still awaits construction. Winter looms, bringing the threat of Shamal storms, with winds reaching up to 56 kilometers per hour. The engineering team faces a tight schedule, with only two years to complete the breakwater. Despite planning for adverse weather, the storms in March 2002 prove more severe than anticipated. The relentless winds, two-meter waves, and turbulent conditions force the construction to halt temporarily. While the breakwater withstands the assault, the project falls three weeks behind schedule, adding immense pressure to catch up. The clock ticks as the fragile sand island awaits protection. Only after completing a 550-meter section of the breakwater can the Palm Island construction proceed. Racing against time, the engineers strive to meet the 2006 deadline for the entire megastructure. Facing an unprecedented challenge, the breakwater and the island must be built simultaneously. This decision, while not ideal, is necessary to adhere to the tight schedule. The breakwater provides minimal protection during the island's construction, creating a delicate balance between the two teams. As the breakwater progresses, the island team, ahead of schedule, lays the sand foundations below sea level. In April 2002, the first section of the breakwater rises three meters above the sea, allowing the Palm Island construction to intensify. However, finding the right sand becomes a significant hurdle. While Dubai has an abundance of desert sand, it proves unsuitable for the project due to its fine particles. The team explores a solution six nautical miles out at sea, where coarse sand, resistant to wave impact, is dredged from the Gulf seabed. This sand, pumped and sprayed into place, forms the foundation for the Palm Island. See year, the island reclamation is finished, with 94 million cubic meters of sand pumped into the Arabian Gulf. The Palm Island has finally emerged from the sea, marking the completion of Phase 1. However, the journey is far from over. To fulfill the Crown Prince's vision, 4,500 houses, apartments, hotels and shopping malls must now be constructed along the waterfront. The Sand Island, though successful in its formation, presents a new challenge. It's loose and uncompacted, making construction difficult. Engineers must find a way to compact the sand, ensuring a firm base for the city at sea. While the idea is simple in theory, the practical implementation poses significant hurdles. The engineers continue to navigate the complexities, determined to overcome each obstacle in the audacious journey of building Palm Jumeirah. Upon five kilometers square, the sand will naturally compress over time. But this process is time-consuming, and time is a luxury the engineers lack. The construction of the infrastructure must commence urgently. Adding to the pressure of the schedule is a crucial reason for reinforcing the city's foundations. Dubai sits on the brink of a major earthquake zone. In Biam, Iran, on the 26th of December 2003, at 5.26 a.m., a massive earthquake measuring 6.6 .6 on the Richter scale hits the town. Within minutes, 60% of the buildings are leveled, 43,000 lives are lost, 20,000 are injured, and 60,000 are left homeless. This earthquake and subsequent ones across the Arabian Gulf serve as a wake-up call to the Palm Island project. The fear of potential disaster in the event of an earthquake prompts the realization that the sand's cohesiveness is compromised during the reclamation process. While the sand appears solid when forming the island, 
the lateral forces of an earthquake could lead to liquefaction, causing the island to disappear. This phenomenon, witnessed in Kobe, Japan, in 1995, resulted in reclaimed land sinking into the sea, causing significant damage. To prevent such a catastrophe, the engineers must ensure that Palm Jumeirah is resilient to liquefaction. In January 2004, 15 machines worked tirelessly to firm up the land. High-pressure water air drives probes deep into the earth, vibrating and compacting the sand. This process, known as vibrocompaction, stabilizes the 17 palm fronds, taking eight months to complete. By March 2004, Palm Jumeirah is ready to transform into a building site. Thousands of trucks, cranes, tons of supplies, and 2,000 laborers descend on the island. The intricate phase of installing infrastructure, including gas pipes, electricity cables, water supplies, and buildings, begins. The goal is ambitious, constructing an entire city at sea within two years. In January 2005, one of the world's largest man-made structures reaches a critical stage. The island's foundations rise from the sea, signaling a shift from sand and rock to concrete, glass and steel. The challenge intensifies as the team endeavors to build an entire city at sea within a tight two-year time frame. The project manager, Scott Hutchinson, acknowledges the complexity of building apartments in this unprecedented setting. With 850 buses ferrying a 40 strong workforce in two 12-hour shifts, the logistical nightmare unfolds. Millions of tons of concrete and steel are imported globally, emphasizing the international scale of the operation. However, complications arise as the schedule slips and developers face the pressure of meeting the 2006 deadline. Challenges include the evolving design of the palm trunk and the addition of the 36-story palm tower, creating further complexity. Despite the frustrations and complexities, the team finds solace in the remarkable setting, appreciating the project's magnitude. With Phase 1 completed and the island reclaimed, a new challenge emerges. Erosion. The beaches, not naturally replenished by the sea, require constant maintenance. The threat expands beyond surface issues, as alterations in wave movement impact the mainland's coastline. The project's success could inadvertently cause erosion, potentially affecting resorts, property, and roads. As engineers grapple with the forces of nature, a new concern surfaces beneath the waves. The impact of this megastructure on marine ecology becomes a focal point. Environmentalists initially raised concerns that the construction would harm local marine life, but ongoing monitoring indicates a positive impact. The breakwater creates shelter for fish and attracts new species, leading to plans for the world's largest artificial reef. By 2005, four years into the project, Palm Jumeirah has left its mark on Dubai's coastline. While environmental concerns persist, the developers strive to balance progress with ecological preservation. The success of this audacious island inspires the vision for two more islands, Palm Jebel Ali and Palm Dira, each surpassing the previous in size and ambition. However, the engineers now grapple with a new challenge, securing supplies for Palm Dira, requiring one 500 million cubic meters of sand, 15 times the amount needed for the first island. The audacious journey of building Palm Jumeirah paves the way for even grander projects, embodying Dubai's spirit of innovation and ambition. Each island is priced at 300, with varying sizes from 5 acres to 20. The deadline for these exclusive private islands is 2007, with Arizona, Wyoming, France and Australia all available for purchase. Prices range from 6 to $36 million before any construction begins. This ambitious project pushes land reclamation to its limits, creating an archipelago of sandbars covering an area nearly 7 kilometers by 9. The challenge lies in positioning each island precisely to achieve the desired global look from space. Any mistake could ruin the entire design. While the Palm Island put Dubai on the map, the world now focuses on Dubai's map. However, concerns arise. Has the development gone too far? Will the demand for property keep pace with the escalating construction, 
or will a bubble burst? Currently, two of the Palm Islands are completely sold out, with a third of the world snapped up. Still, a considerable portion remains for sale. Despite this, developers express confidence, foreseeing no end to the demand. Megastructures become the latest trend, reaching new heights in January 2005 with the launch of the Dubai waterfront. This claw-shaped landmass extends far out to sea, creating 75 kilometers of waterfront reaching into the desert. Collectively, these megastructures aim to increase Dubai's coastline from 72 to a staggering 1,500 kilometers, a 21-18% surge. Simultaneously, the First Palms construction team diligently works towards meeting the 2008 deadline. The island stands as a testament to defying nature, showcasing engineers' commitment to pushing the boundaries of technology. The Palm Island truly stands as an awe-inspiring megastructure.